Well, hello there. My name is Spider. Welcome to my little lair. I am an artist uh, who prefers to draw characters. So I thought it'd be fun to make a channel mostly dedicated to the premise of making characters based on short prompts. Uh, at some point, I think I'd like to bring in the aesthetic generator. Would be cute. Um, for now, I figured go with something easy, something fun um, that comes pretty naturally to me and uh, is appropriate for the most wonderful time of the year, Halloween. So this prompt is going to be a jack-o'-lantern, as you've probably ascertained from the title. Uh, yeah, my main idea going into this character design was uh, this big, poofy jack-o'-lantern skirt. Um, so that's kind of the premise where I started. And as you can see, I just sort of made some little references for myself up at the top, just getting a feel for the pumpkin shape, which uh, when it's one of those long rectangular ones, you know, horizontally rectangular, I think it kind of looks like a bow. So I wanted to incorporate bows into the design somehow if possible. And uh, here in this other sketch, I'm sort of compounding on the pumpkin skirt idea getting in that uh, big shape and wanted to go for maybe one of those taller pumpkins. And then for a while I messed around with the idea of a witch hat. thought this could be a little pumpkin witch. Maybe hang like one of those little jack-o'-lantern shaped bells <laughs> off the tip. Um, so I think in the character design process it's important to just get down some really loose thumbnails. So all the ideas that you have floating around, right, kind of combine them. And then usually my process is to take an idea I like and sort of expand on it, um, push it, pull it, make more exaggerated shapes, uh, usually decide what's going to be the biggest, most predominant shape, and then try to not make any more huge shapes around it that make it look smaller by comparison. So I'm kind of incorporating the whole, you know, you got the big pumpkin shape and then I wanted some more little pumpkin shapes and then some medium stuff to balance it out. I actually really like this idea in the lower left corner of a uh, kind of pumpkin overalls. Um, and I like the idea of a straw witch hat, which I don't think I've seen, but I think I'm going to load that idea in the hopper and use that some other time for maybe like a scarecrow prompt. Uh, same with the middle drawing, actually. I like this idea of a spooky biker and uh, kind of thought that the jack-o'-lantern faces I'd put on their poofy clothes looked more like ghosts. So I was like, hmm. Maybe I can incorporate that teardrop shape into a more solidified kind of biker idea. And, you know, why not torture myself with the chance to draw like a motorcycle or something? <laughs> every, every, every artist's favorite thing to draw technical drawings. Um, as you can probably tell, I really like the uh, potato sack shape. So I kind of wanted to just make that the entire body for this last doodle. And uh, I, I love me a potato sack shape. Probably my favorite shape. Um, I kind of end up just going with the first idea that I started with of that big poofy pumpkin skirt, but I'm glad I kind of experimented around, find, found some more things that I liked. Uh, added some poofiness to the sleeves. Just, again, took that first idea and just really pushed and pulled. Um, I think it's quite challenging to get a good silhouette read, which is always important for your character. Um, when you have big poofy shapes, unless you want to draw them in like a T-pose, so I had to try to think of a fun pose to put this person in where they would have their arms akimbo and not have all the, you know, puffy shapes overlapping. So I figured, like, maybe I could lean into what I was already getting from this sort of direction I was going and uh, have them kind of, you know, doing something where it's like, I want it to be, like, cute but kind of spooky and mysterious at the same time. Maybe a little unsettling. Uh, I always think, you know, jack-o'-lanterns look so joyful and fun with their little faces, but kind of unsettling to think that you, like, carve it out, <laughs> put fire inside of it, you know. So I kind of wanted to capture that vibe. Uh, so I had this character kind of, like, beckoning you to come over. Like, oh, look at me. I'm so cute and innocent. Just come over. Just let me show you something. Let me show you something real quick. It's, it's, not, it's fine. It's fine. It's not scary. It's not scary. It's a jack-o'-lantern. It's not scary. And so then, you know, I had to add a candle somewhere. You know, because you gotta, like you do. Um, so here, I'm just really incorporating that bow shape, like I was saying before. And kind of playing around with different material. 
So once I had the big shape sort of set in, I had to figure out where I was going to disperse the little details. Since you got this big kind of spaced out area kind of taking up most of the canvas, I thought it'd be good to have like little tight lines in other places. And then uh, I myself do, you know, a couple sketch layers first. Uh, I kind of need that safety net a little bit. Um, I feel that it helps me to retain like the energy of the original sketch um, to have something a little bit more solid, a little more solid than, you know, just like a really quick thumbnail, like a, you know, like a doodle, a scribble. I like to have that kind of middle ground where I haven't done you know, solidified, oh, I'm like trying to draw the line outside of the shape. But um, so there's still room to kind of ad lib my lines on top of it. But yeah, I, I, I just I'm, I'm big on not really getting too married to any one idea. Um, so you'll see me resize things, erase things. Um, that's just part of my process. You'll also probably notice that I <laughs> We'll do a line, press undo, do a line, press undo, do a line, press undo. And that's because I don't want to pet the line, uh, like they say. I don't want to do just like kind of little tick marks, like unsure. I want like really big, swoopy, confident lines because that's the line work I like to look at. And I think it has the most energy. And so, you know, if you're going to make a big, swoopy line, but it's, you know, wrong <laughs> or like not what you wanted, not conveying what you would like. I mean, that's just as ineffective as the line that you meticulously sat there and made being incorrect. So, uh, you know, I try to use the advantages of the medium itself. Like, obviously, you can't do that when you're inking in real life. Uh, you kind of have to commit to whatever line you started with. But, um, you know, so this is just taking advantage of the medium itself of digital. And, you know, I'm not trying to fool anybody into <laughs> thinking that I didn't make this digitally. Um I definitely see the benefits of kind of painting on one layer. And for painting, I definitely do that. But uh, cartoon style like this with line work is just its own monster, uh, you know, as far as like comics or animation. And I think another important thing with line work is to make sure that it's implying volume. So when I'm making it, I'm never thinking of drawing the line outside of the character. I'm thinking of where is the volume pushing out to? Because um, I like these kind of big, lumpy shapes that sort of imply that they're taking up space in real life. Obviously still stylized. <laughs> like, duh. Oh, here's where I had the idea for uh, some kind of... I really like harnesses. It's just a style thing that I like. And I thought also contributed to that, like... It's sweet and cute and girly and innocent and, you know, this dress, this big poofy dress with these frills and everything, but then you got the harness over it, add a little bit of spice, you know, a little bit of spookiness. Um, but I thought, yeah, I could make it kind of resemble the face of a jack-o'-lantern without being too literal. I still think it came out kind of literal. Uh, and then I made sure to imply texture with these lines as if the, I'm thinking about the material of the dress at this point. And I want to say that um, this middle section where the puffy sleeves and the puffy skirt connect to are on this maybe like ribbed fabric. And then I think later I go in and add some thinner lines to imply like a tighter knit. Um, so I'm kind of keeping all of these things in mind while I'm doing sort of my freeform line work over this loose sketch. Um, thinking about material uh, and varying up. So if I'm varying the texture, varying the sizes but still kind of keeping a harmony with the shapes and trying to balance all of that out. Um, Cause you can have like a really cool concept, but if you're kind of too married to depicting it literally, especially in a stylized drawing like this, um, you're going to miss out on making something that's visually dynamic because you'll be too afraid to kind of do an unliteral, like for a long time, I just did very literal representations of things. Like I would translate an idea, you know, straight to my character, uh, without thinking about overall design and I've just learned over the years after many <laughs> tutorials uh and some schooling you know that literal is not really the way to go um you're trying to evoke more 
an idea of something and less of less of what it actually literally is. So we want everything about, you know, this character in particular to be like, oh, it's going to be big and lumpy and, you know, kind of weirdly joyful, you know, those goofy expressions on <laughs> Jack o Lantern's faces. But at the same time, you know, it's Halloween. Got to keep it a little, got to keep it a little edgy. <laughs> got to keep it a little spooky. <laughs> um, and then here, I, I don't know if you can tell, I really love drawing shoes. Uh, I think it's one of my favorite parts of drawing, uh, like representational, like actual characters. Um, <laughs> recently I was doing character design for this character, having all this fun with the shoes and then had completely just ignored, you know, the client's <laughs> description of like this, like one of the features of the characters, they walk around with no shoes on. <laughs> So I'd spent all this time, <laughs> uh, you know, drawing intricate, like, lace-up, whatever, 18 eye at Doc Martens. <laughs> I just had to scrap all of it. I think I, like, saved it on another layer or something. But uh, a second ago, I just uh, laid over the kind of just an anatomical drawing to make sure that my proportions were still on. Sometimes when you're stretching and pulling things around, um, it can look nice and interesting but then it starts to if you're trying to make it look like a human there's certain rules that you have to follow proportion wise so I kind of drew a little under layer to like ground me back in what the human form would look like underneath uh so it's not that I don't go back and change the line work after this a little bit um because again I'm changing stuff throughout the whole process it's a whole conversation right that you're having with your art piece um but here I've just moved on to coloring it was you know line work was good enough for now and I color in a industry standard way of uh, for flatting comics. And it's basically that you are making selections that are like dictating where a block of color is going to go. So everything that I want to be, you know, the sleeve color, that color is only going to be on the sleeves or anything that's matching it. Um, it's kind of hard to explain <laughs> if, uh, you know, you don't use digital programs. And this isn't a tutorial, but, you know, uh, long story short, <laughs> I'm making, I'm blocking out big sections of color that I can quickly change as kind of the spirit of being able to kind of quickly mess with colors. Um, once you have them in their little selections and they're bound to that area, you can change the color at, at you know, like that, like it on a whim. Um, or let's say that you, like, I'll eventually go in and make patterns on, uh, some of this material. Cause I, I really wanted like a patchwork feel that felt very pumpkin patchy to me. Oh, I just, I just got that. Okay. <laughs> Maybe my brain is a little too literal. Anyway, um, I add some material and textures and everything. And, and it's just easier to do that if you can select the area and keep it bound within that area. So that way, when you draw outside of it, it doesn't you're drawing outside of the selection. Um, again, another <laughs> really cool thing about digital, um, you only have to kind of color in the lines once. It's not like a painting where you, you rub up to the edge and you're like, uh-oh, <laughs> gotta be real careful here, you know? Uh, yeah, and, and, and I say I would say that that is an advantage to digital as much as it is a drawback. <laughs> because if you can infinitely edit and change something, when is it done? You know, people probably felt the same with oil paintings, right? Like, like I can just kind of 20 days later still sort of manipulate the paint around. Like, when is it? Then when is it finished? Like, <laughs> you know, so that becomes uh, definitely as a beginner it was very hard for me to determine. Um, it's like, do I keep going? Do I keep because I think digital painting or just making anything digitally. It's so easy to accidentally overwork. <laughs> But yeah, see here, I'm, I've just selected the area of the bow and that's it. So now if I draw outside of it, it doesn't matter. Like it'll only stay in that little, little selection area that I made. Um, yeah, so I'm, I try different patterns and textures. Uh, again, keeping in mind, okay, this bow is like a big shape and all of the material below it, you know, the pumpkins have that big shape on them. I'm, I'm going for something tiny, right? Something, something little. I'm not adding details to the hair. I didn't plan to anyway. And so uh, 
you know, it just looked like it was a space that needed something kind of small. And I brought some of that little smallness onto the details of the face. Um, I really like when people paint on like fake freckles and put little shapes in the freckles. So I wanted to add that in there. Uh, oh, I, I kind of thought that the striping on the dress, the areas of the dress that were ribbed, was a little too similar to the material of the tights and I didn't want to make it look like the same material. So I took the opportunity to add some plaid because I figured it probably should be in there somewhere again. Scarecrows, pumpkin patches, corn mazes, you know, we want to evoke uh, Halloween here. Um, I actually really like making plaid. Yeah, honestly, this whole drawing is just uh, in self-indulgence. <laughs> it's all the things I like drawing. I like drawing fashion. I like shoes. I like uh, playing with textures and patterns and all that stuff. So it was very fun. And obviously, obviously love Halloween. Like, come on, let's go. Spider layer, come on. <laughs> but yeah, basically with plaid, it's like crisscrossing. It's almost like a checkerboard, but it's like, it's like crisscrossing lines and then where they meet in the middle changes color. And then there's like smaller lines through that. There's a lot of different ways to do plaid. Oh, and I don't know if you've ever seen those socks with the uh, little pom-poms, little sparkly pom-poms on them, but I thought that'd be perfect here. It was, it was just missing a little something. Um, I had fun making a little shoe pattern there. Hadn't put polka dots anywhere yet. I was trying to think of anything that I would, uh, you would find on like a scarecrow material, like in just that very cliche sense you know we're not trying to like reinvent the wheel we're, we're trying to use things that already evoke uh halloween and pumpkin patches also i think these shoes would be the little bows on them would be so impractical <laughs> walking around jingling you got this mysterious creature <laughs> coming up to you like, <laughs> trying to be spooky and their shoes are just jingling <laughs> but you know maybe it adds to the uh the innocent, you know, to, you're not on your guard, right? You're like, oh, who's this fool? They're jingling shoes, whatever. Yeah, no, I can trust them. They, they're harmless. Uh, I had this idea for like a little, like the fire could be almost like a little jack-o'-lantern spirit of sorts. And I mess around with that a bit more later. Um, you'll, you'll see, I, I add some more to that. Uh, but for now, yeah, I'm just going in with, uh, not getting married, too married to any color, also, by the way, I should add, um, and you'll see that I can just grab the whole selection now and change the color of the stripes, uh, which I probably do approximately 400 times, but it's super sped up, so yeah, you can't see it as well. Um, yeah, we, we gotta have the, gotta have the spider webs. I mean, like, how could I not? Yeah, this part was... Definitely the most fun to do if I had to pick. <laughs> the most fun I had making this. It was just mesmerizing to sit here and make this little pattern. Is it narcissistic that it's... <laughs> I, really enjoy... I really enjoy watching myself make it. <laughs> I'm like, hold on, you guys. Let me replay that <laughs> for me. Um, this drawing obviously is sped up. It took maybe, I think the footage overall edited, I think it was like four hours. Um, not the fastest person, but, uh, like I said, I meticulously go in and block out all the colors, uh, so that they're easy to change. Again, I'm not really, I don't paint that often, so, uh, the process would have definitely been different. Painting is ironically a bit faster, um in my for me anyway I just think this uh, blocking out selections is a little more efficient so I'm finally going and kind of blending just the local values this is before any shading uh I just want to make sure to vary up the skin tone it just makes the skin a little bit easier to sell as a you know as in obviously not realistic but gives it a little bit of life a little bit of color Pretty sure nobody can see those close-up details uh, from this far away, but <laughs> the final image is just like this tiny little thing on my Instagram. I uh, was thinking about 
doing a series of these Halloween prompts and possibly making them into, I don't know, like, um, Halloween Valentine <laughs> cards. <laughs> um, I usually every, so every year for the past maybe four or five years, I've sold Valentine's cards on Etsy. Uh, then I I'll make like, you know, six to 10 of them and, uh, they usually sell pretty well. So I'm like, Oh, maybe I can do that for for this too. I don't know, it would just be fun. Again, just super self-indulgent, easy for me to make. Um, here I'm just adding in, uh, I guess you could consider it cell shading. I like to just grab a big selection for the shadow and then go back in and soften it out in certain places. Um, what's great is if you, you can see those layers off to the side, if you just kind of keep your shadow layer, um, uh, once it's, pretty much done and you have it blended out and crisped up the way you like, you can go back in and add a, <laughs> you can lock it, right? And then go, uh, bring like a soft brush in a darker color up to the sides of the shadow and make like that core shadow. It's so fast. It's such a cheat. <laughs> uh, here I'm blocking in some lighting, which a friend pointed out is a little, like at the time I was, I was streaming while making this and somebody was saying that it's, a uh, there's no way that that little light spirit was creating that much light, you know, lighting the whole character. And I was like, oh man, you got a good point. So, uh, also the light source color that I've thrown on the character is quite warm. And so I end up not only making more little spirits like this, but, uh, kind of change the colors around and make them a little more orange and warm so that that lighting makes sense. Cause I wanted to keep it. <laughs> Got these little little floaty guys that definitely could not be mistaken for anything gross so you know why would you why would you even say that why would you even think that that's so rude of you get your mind out of the gutter and then i have these guys on um a layer with some kind of effect it's either like vivid color or a overlay or one of those oh i decided it needed a stark blue kind of rim light that was like soft enough that it wasn't kind of pulling and uh you'll see me turn this to grayscale periodically so I can see if the light is working or not or the values and then yeah just kind of throw in a little background that was kind of boring so chance to draw more spider webs <laughs> outline some uh jack-o'-lanterns there at the bottom too I made this the dimensions of a card that would fit in the mini envelopes I have that I usually get for Valentine's Day, just in case, you know, just in case I wanted to turn it to a card. The inside will probably say something like, um, you light a fire inside me, Valentine. <laughs> I love a pun. I, I, I just, I live. <laughs> Use me adding my silly little name, messing around with that for a minute. And yeah, that's basically it. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm hoping to have more uploads with uh, other artists on as guests. And then we kind of just both use the same prompt uh, and see what the other comes up with. And, you know, I can chat with them while we're doing it. Maybe ask them some questions. Because, uh, you know, if one artist is good, then why, why not have two for the price of nothing? I mean, it's kind of just a win-win for you. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, follow me on social media. I'm at SpiderLayer on uh, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, I think, too. I'll put the links below. So uh, like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye!